Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nolly. In this uh, last two topics, which is going to come in this uh, one video, I'll be talking about uh, two properties of substances that we often measure uh, as a way to determine what kind of substance we're dealing with. Uh, the first property is temperature. Uh, we often measure this and I just want to talk a little bit about what kind of scales you'll be measuring temperature in. And then secondly, we'll talk about density which is yet another uh, intensive property that uh, is often measured and used to determine what kind of uh, substances we're dealing with. So let's talk about temperature real quickly. Most of you should be familiar with these three scales of temperature that we are dealing with, uh, which is the Kelvin scale, Celsius scale, and the Fahrenheit scale. And one of the things that you want to keep in mind is how these three scales relate to each other. As you notice here, um, the way scales are related to each other is actually fairly straightforward. Uh, what you have to do is you have to determine what the starting point is and what the ending point is for uh, the three different scales for the same process. In this case, usually the standard process that we look at in terms of determining the relationship between the scales is the temperature at which, at which water freezes uh, in each scale and then the temperature at which water boils at each scale. So if you have um, the Celsius scale, this is the simplest, which is defined as just 0 and 100. So 0 degrees Celsius, temperature at which water freezes, uh, 100 degrees Celsius, water boils. Uh, the corresponding values for Fahrenheit is 32 degrees and 212, as you might already know. And the corresponding values for Kelvin is 273 and 373. Okay? Now, what you can do then is you can use these relationships, okay, which is uh, what the values is of each one of these uh, um, starting and ending point, and then relate it between the two scales, and you you can obtain the conversion um, equation to relate one scale to another. I'm going to show you in the next slide how to do this. So let's say we want to relate the Celsius and the Fahrenheit temperature, okay. One of the first things you want to notice is uh, between the freezing of water and the boiling of water, there's a hundred degrees of the Celsius unit, right? Whereas between the freezing, the same two processes, freezing and boiling of water, you have uh, 32 to 212. And if you calculate the difference between those two numbers, you find that there's 180 degrees or 180 units of the Fahrenheit uh, degrees. So in other words, the same processes, right, the same two processes is covered by 100 Celsius degrees and by 180 Fahrenheit degrees, okay? That's what we call the conversion factor between the two uh, temperatures, scales. Okay, so we just talk about the fact that if for every 100 degrees uh, unit in Celsius, there is 180 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So this is our conversion factor. In other words, you can say that for 100 degrees Celsius, we have 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Or you can say that for 180 degrees Fahrenheit, we have 100 degrees Celsius. Whichever way you express this, this expression can be reduced down to 5 degrees Celsius uh, to 9 degrees Fahrenheit, or 9 degrees Fahrenheit to 5 degrees Celsius. That's the lowest. Um, whole number ratio of these two uh, numbers right here, or you can make it a 1.8 to, to 1 uh, in this one, or 1 to 1 1.8, but usually I just use the 5 over 9. That's your conversion factor. What it's saying is that every time you go up 5 degrees Celsius, you're going up on the same, um, uh, on the Fahrenheit scale, 9 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So the second thing you need to know is what is the starting point of each of the scale. Remember that for the Celsius, we start with 0 degrees Celsius being the freezing point of water. This is equal to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So the starting point of these two scales is not the same. So one of the things that you want to do first is to set them to be the same scale. Usually this is set to be uh, going, you know, referencing the uh, uh, one of the scales that you want, usually the Celsius scale in this case. So if you're starting with Fahrenheit, if you want to convert to Celsius, the first thing you have to do is you have to subtract 32 from the number because this put you on the same basis, the same starting point as the Celsius scale. And then the next thing you need to do is you then you need to convert this because this is now currently still in the Fahrenheit scale. You need to convert this to 
your Celsius scale. And to do that, we need a conversion factor, and we developed that conversion factor already, which is 5 over 9. Okay, so that allows you to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius. If you want to do Celsius to Fahrenheit, then you just need to do the opposite, which is you take the Celsius temperature, you kind of sort of do a, a little um, algebra here to move this all to this side, so you get times 9 Fahrenheit over 5 Celsius, and then you add 32 to bring it up to the Fahrenheit temperature. Okay, you can relate this with Kelvin as well using the same reasoning. Uh, just remember in Kelvin and Celsius, the increase is really the same, right? So if you think about the difference between Celsius and Kelvin, uh, from water freezing to water boiling, you have exactly 100 degrees Kelvin and 100 degrees Celsius. So in other words, between Kelvin and Celsius, you have this relationship, which is just 1 Kelvin to 1 degree Celsius. So that's why... Um, we don't really worry about it because it's a one-to-one -one relationship between the two scales, but we do have to reset the starting point correctly. So when it's zero degrees in Celsius, it's 270 degrees in Kelvin. So for every uh, temperature that starts with Kelvin, we have to subtract 273 just the same way as we subtract 32 in the Fahrenheit scale uh, because we want to bring them to the same starting point. Okay, so... Uh, I'm going to give you a question uh, later on in the uh, questionnaire, talk a little bit about um, conversion between temperature scales, something that you want to think about, but this is really the, the, the way you would kind of you know, convert between temperature scales. So I want to mention one more thing, which is that the conversion for temperature scale is actually given to you in your exam, so you, that's one thing that you don't need to memorize ahead of time. Most uh, all the other equations given in this class you either have to memorize or you have to know how to derive, but the temperature conversion is really something that you, uh, is provided for you, and it comes in the form of this periodic table and physical constant form, which you can um, download in your um, website, in the class website, and it um, uh, contains a simple periodic table as well as physical constant lists of all the different constants that you might need to use in this class. So just to give you a, a view of this uh, sheet, the, the form, the first page of it is just a periodic table component. As you can see, this is fairly simple periodic table, something that you've seen before probably, except that most uh, all the masses are rounded to the ones. And then the second page of this is a list of uh, physical constants. You can see here Avogadro's number and so on. And if I scroll down here a little bit, you can see that at the very end here, there is... Um, conversion factors and equations basically provided for converting between temperature scales. So if you ever need that, it's provided for you in this uh, sheet. You can print this out, bring it to class, or during exams it will be provided for you. Okay, so the next property we want to talk about a little bit, um, it's an intensive property, which is the density. Okay, Density, as most of you know, is the mass of a substance divided by its volume. This refers to, when we talk about density, we're referring to a pure substance. So we're referring to something that contains only one, um, uh, you know, it's a pure substance. So it's either an element or it's a compound, but it's not a mixture, right? So uh, when we say uh, density, we're talking about what is the mass of that compound divided by the volume that's occupied by that compound. So if you think about this formula, what it's measuring is really it's a measure of how many particles, right? How many atoms or how many molecules can you fit into a given amount of space. So if you have, let's say, one cubic centimeter of space, how many grams of particles, iron, gold, water particles perhaps, water molecules, can you fit into one cubic centimeter of space? Okay, so think about it. So you have, think about um, sizes of rooms, right? So let's say you have a room of a particular size. How many people can I fit into that particular room? Uh, or how many boxes can I fit into that particular room? That's what density measures. Okay, so always think about it in that, in that you know, hopefully you have a visual for it. You have kind of a, a way to envision that. Now, the unit, as you can see, would be the unit of mass divided by the unit of volume. So these are some conventional units that you would see often uh, for density depending on what state of matter uh, you encounter the substance in. So if it's a solid, 
usually we express the mass in grams and then the volume is expressed as cubic centimeter okay this is specifically for solids if you're talking about liquids the unit would be gram still for mass but then the volume unit usually would be in milliliters and one cubic centimeter and one milliliter is the same quantity same amount of space and then for gas because gases are occupy much bigger volume okay than um, uh, for a given sample the unit is usually grams per liter so you notice that this uh, uh, 1000 difference uh, in uh, one you know 1000 fold difference in terms of the amount of space available for a gas versus a liquid okay so that's something important to kind of keep in mind just by looking at these units uh, in the next video I'll be talking about uh, we'll go through a particular problem on density and how to use density in, to identify a substance